what is good Tesla family it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock what you should be looking after for the future I'm also going to break down what the news data and technicals are telling us about the overall market and how it may affect Tesla and what data is coming out too I'm going to break down what's going on with Tesla share price what my price prediction is for tomorrow and why I'm actually particularly bullish for tomorrow given what's about to happen now before I break anything down about this before I talk about why Tesla may explode I do have to mention a couple of things before starting Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below. And deposit any amount of money into the account. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And the best part is and it could be a free tesla share it's a limited time offer the offer ends tomorrow so make sure you check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video tesla was up 0.72 percent for the day holding up quite nicely i did make a video yesterday and i mentioned that i wasn't too sure about how today would play out because we had you know the gdp numbers coming out and also lots of fed speakers and this is actually some very positive news for the markets because what happened was the GDP numbers were not too bad. They were actually very close to expectations, maybe a little bit lower from some ends over there. But the initial jobless claims were a little bit high, and the market ended up gapping up on this news. Now, the market was hit with some very strong resistance. We had resistance on the QQQ, which it actually broke temporarily before kind of dropping a little bit. And SPY actually tried to break out and ended up just coming short. And overall, the market still did very well. What else is very significant about this is the Fed speakers Barkin, Kashkari, Collins, and Waller all spoke today. They were actually quite hawkish. They were saying the Fed has lots of work to do. You know, uh, inflation is still too hot. It's going to be a bumpy ride. And so many very hawkish things. Despite all of the hawkish things that came out, the market did not crash. The market did not tank. The market held up quite nicely, which is once again showing lots of signs of strength. However, tomorrow is going to be another very interesting day because we have PCE also coming out and this will affect how the market moves. I want to note that for tomorrow, PC is actually expected to be uh, not too horrible, uh, ba basically like a 0.5% increase month over month. We're also going to most likely see the forecast at around 5.1% year over year for PCE and core around 4.7%. So what is PCE data, by the way? This is basically another inflationary measure. It's like CPI, except for the Fed. This is what the Fed tends to prioritize. Now, what is good about this, though, is this is actually for the month of February, right? That was quite a while ago. And if you look at how CPI came out for the month of February, just about a week and a half ago, CPI was not too horrible, not too great either. It was kind of in the middle. It did increase by 0.4% month over month. But overall, the trend is still showing us signs that CPI already peaked. And it's likely not going to explode to the high levels we saw last year. But there is the possibility of it upticking again by the time we get to summer. We just don't have the data to support that just yet. I also want to note that some sectors did increase to some degree, but most of them were actually kind of tame. So it was a pretty mixed report. Not too bad, though. And the market ended up actually rallying the day after CPI came out, also the same day it came out. So that's a good sign for tomorrow. PCE is most likely going to be very close to expectations very very close to them the forecast as well and if that's the case this could be a good sign for the markets now for tomorrow i want to note something very very important we actually have almost 2 million puts expiring tomorrow, almost that many. We saw another 100 plus thousand puts that were opened just today alone. We saw another 100,000 plus calls opened. We actually have a 2.37 put to call ratio. So the majority of investors have puts with 397 max pain. And we're actually over 1.59% higher than max pain right now. What does this mean for tomorrow? What this means is the institutions holding the puts are going to try to push the market down, try to fight, try to get more of these puts in the money. However, the market makers who are actually in charge of either like buying the puts back and also being players in the game, they're very, very inclined to causing pain for the shorts, trying to cause a short squeeze. And I believe that's what their intention is, seeing how the market is holding up so far, right? So the market makers don't want to pay out these premiums. The market makers are going to incentivize a lot of these puts to be closed. And if the puts be, end up uh, being closed, 
what happens is they start hedging by closing them. When they hedge, they're going to uh, help the market pump even more by buying more into the stocks, and this can actually pump the markets. Now, I don't know exactly how this will play out. I want to note that, but the odds do favor a continue continuation of the market pushing, the market pushing up even more. It's very likely that we're going to see a continuation of the short squeeze, which could help Tesla in essence. Now, what does this mean for the markets? I just want to note something. Uh, there's one more thing I want to say. I think some people need some clarification about one more thing before I talk about Tesla, the news, and etc. Um, I'm still bearish on the markets, guys. I'm not necessarily a, per a perma bull, whatever word you want to use. I'm still bearish. I think by May or June or later on, there's going to be downside coming, maybe even later during this year, based off the banking crisis, based off what's happening with the Fed, inflation, the recession, the uh, jobs numbers that which are going to actually start not looking too good, there's going to be pain for earnings as well. So I am seeing downside coming for the markets in the future. It's just that for the short term, for the last like week or so, I was pretty bullish on the markets and Tesla because that's what the technicals, the charts were telling us. And that's also because of the fact that we got a bullish breakout very recently from these key moving averages. So for the short term, I was a lot more bullish. I still am more inclined that the market's going to keep going. There's no sign of the market just reversing just yet. And I want to note this because, yes, the market could keep going, but that, that does not mean the market's going to rally forever. There is a possible you know, head and shoulders developing on SPY. I will talk more about it later. Uh, but for the time being, we do look like we're going to continue pushing up for now. Now, before I talk more about the technicals, I want to break down very important news that came up for all Tesla investors and why I believe Tesla has the potential to keep going. It's likely going to see 200 plus by tomorrow, in my opinion. The first main reason is this right here. Uh, all the news is coming out and saying that Tesla, NEO, Li Auto, and Exmon could jolt the entire sector with the new deliveries that are coming out. The entire uh, consumer discretionary sector is continuing to outperform the market. And we're seeing stocks like NEO and Tesla just continuing to hold. And NEO in partic particular, excuse me, is doing a lot better too. NEO is actually up over 6%. The market is still seeing tech doing well. And also many of these stocks are doing well too in this sector. Now, that's one good piece of news because deliveries are coming out and there's a lot of hype associated with them. Many analysts from Wedbush are saying that Tesla is going to kill it. They have $225 price targets on Tesla and they're saying they're expecting over 420,000 deliveries. There's a lot of hype right now that's actually helping Tesla's share price. Something else that came out that Tesla is now tweeting about is the fact that Tesla is actually going to be selling these things right over here. If you're not sure what that is, it's actually going to be beer. It's pronounced uh, Giga Beer. I know I'm saying that wrong. I think it should be said with a German accent. It's basically a Cybertruck inspired $30 beer right now. It's a limited edition beer that Tesla is selling. Pretty cool stuff. Elon Musk was also talking about this. Uh, they're just doing this in honor of the like 500th anniversary of a German production of beer from a certain company. Pretty cool stuff. I also want to note that Elon Musk did tweet this very recently, which is some interesting news. The news mentioned that the Tesla uh, Giga Mexico may consume the least water of any car factory on the planet. And Elon Musk ended up saying it will per vehicle. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, I also wanted to add the fact that there was some negative news about the Tesla solar roof uh, installments right now falling behind. That is actually the case that is going on right now. This does not matter too much to us right now because this is not one of Tesla's main priorities. But even though that's the case... It should be completely fine. I think going forward, I'm still seeing a big increase in Tesla energy. Energy storage is still a very, very good thing for them. And in the future, I still see this still improving the solar roof installations. Just for now, there is a bit of a slowdown, not the end of the world, but I just wanted to note this. The news is just making a big deal out of this. And finally, the news is just reiterating this news right here. That the $7,500 tax credit for the Model 3 will be reduced, unfortunately. And if anything, it could even be completely lost. That's what the news is just saying. Uh, this is very important because of the fact that their batteries are still being outsourced uh, from China. And that does not actually align with the requirements for the tax credit. Now, this has led to scrutiny for the regulation itself, but also for uh, Tesla, because now this is affecting their inventory levels to some degree. I'm not necessarily too scared about how they're doing like globally. I think Tesla's still killing it, but this does actually make me a little bit apprehensive, just a little bit for deliveries that are coming out. You see, what, what's happening is, as I mentioned on this channel, 
the price goods came here. This is basically Tesla's inventory levels. They were getting lots of inventory levels because of the fact that demand was slowing down for the Teslas, right? They had the price cuts. This thing actually dropped. We saw less inventory because more Teslas were being bought. But the problem is, as of right now, ever since the news came out about the Model 3 not qualifying for more tax credits, this has actually led the overall Tesla inventory levels to start increasing a little bit more, which means that demand is slowing down a little bit more too. Now, Tesla has been incentivizing people to buy more of their cars by actually giving away free uh, tens of thousands of free miles for charging. Once again, that's awesome stuff. And I am still a little concerned because this has been increasing for the last few few weeks. I'm still hoping they kill it regardless of that because inventory levels have been low for most of this quarter anyways. So I'm still optimistic. I'm still hoping Tesla kills it. And until the day comes when Tesla actually announces their deliveries, we still have a couple of days left and we still have time for Tesla to continue to rally in anticipation of the event. As I mentioned yesterday and before, I'm confident they're going to kill it in China, break another record there. They're killing it in Europe. They just need over, I calculated about like, uh, I think it was somewhere around a hundred and like 250 plus thousand deliveries, at least just in the US to meet their expectations. I don't know if they're going to reach it. I still believe they can. I'm hoping they do. And I'm going to be very optimistic because Tesla does have a tendency of beating expectations. And if they do, the share price is going to rocket even more after next week. Now, when it comes to the data so far, Tesla is still lacking some volume, which means that a lot of the price action is due to short covering and also lots of repositioning. We're also seeing some buying pressure that is emerging, but we may see even more tomorrow because of hype. Tomorrow is the last trading day until the data comes out for delivery deliveries for Q1, that could help Tesla too. I also want to note that the short volume did increase a little bit just yesterday. We did see a lot of shorting that was happening. We did see some selling pressure for Tesla around certain levels, but that's because of the fact that Tesla did cool off a bit and just retest support, but it still held up since then. Now, despite this big increase, we still saw Tesla close green and continue to push up, which is a sign that the bulls have the edge over the stock. What that means is Tesla's holding up nicely still. It's still closed above 195, which is a good sign. It still has lots of strength. Uh, the price price ratio is still at this high level. It's holding up quite nicely. It's just waiting. I think this might improve a bit for tomorrow because of the fact that there's a lot of hype. And if Tesla kills it with deliveries, this thing is going to rocket even more. It's going to heavily outperform the market. We'll just have to wait and see how that goes. But for now, we're still seeing Wedbush reiterating that Tesla is going to most likely outperform the market. They're still very, very bullish. That's some good news. We have earnings in about three weeks. Um, Tesla has a tendency of beating on earnings. Hopefully that is the case again. I'm going to be a little concerned about the margins though because we are seeing a lot of price cuts and Tesla got lots of scrutiny, but so far it has helped them in terms of getting their inventory levels down and spurring up demand. Hopefully that continues. Now for Friday, we do have a tendency of closing kind of red, but I'm not too worried about this Friday. I think Tesla is going to kill it again. We tend to improve our price action by the fourth hour. It could even happen by the third hour. We've been seeing a bit of an increase as well in volatility by then. And on top of that, you could see Tesla has a tendency of doing very well in April in particular, even the entire market as well. But Tesla does do well during the first quarter deliveries typically. 58% of the time we're green in the month of April, so I'm hoping for something very good to come very soon. March tends to not be as good, but so far Tesla's holding up, so I'm not too worried about that metric either. As far as the short interest goes, this thing is starting to downtrend. Once again, short covering is happening on Tesla. We're not seeing as many shorts piling in during times of uncertainty. Now, what I'm essentially seeing on the charts right now is, is some good signs for Tesla. I want to note that so far, Tesla has been actually fighting this support and resistance zone. It's very close to being between where the 195 zone is and also the 190. Now, when you zoom out of the chart, this thing has been respecting an uptrend once again, making higher highs and higher lows. We're well above our moving averages, which is both the daily moving average and also the 50 and 200. And overall, it's looking nice. So what I want to see for tomorrow is, could Tesla not just hold 195 after PC comes out, but continue to push? It looks very likely like it will. And we're going to have to fight for 198.5 to 200. We have a resistance zone around here. 
if Tesla could break this zone, if we break this, we could go all the way up to like 202.5, maybe a little higher. And I do believe it's very likely something like that is going to happen. We're starting to see a lot of consumer discretionaries outperform the market. We're seeing NEO doing very well. And I believe this trend is just going to continue and Tesla's likely going to keep trying. Now, I want to go over the more bearish case just in case something doesn't go as planned because of PCE. We have to be prepared just in case. Make sure you watch this uh, 195 support followed by about 193 ish if that fails there's 190 then 188 make sure you watch those levels just in case something doesn't go as planned however like i said before i think it's very unlikely tesla comes down to those levels i believe this thing is most likely going to try to shoot up especially because when the market was slowing down today for most of the day tesla was still holding up very nicely and outperforming it so i do believe tesla has a lot of potential in my opinion like i said before i think it doesn't matter how we open, whether we gap down and just start pumping or we just pump from the morning. Either way, I think Tesla's going to visit $200 tomorrow, maybe touch 202.5. See a very, very nice green day. And we should close quite green as many investors are very excited about these deliveries. And I believe Tesla will do well. Once again, I do have some concerns because of the inventory levels, but for the most part, I am still very, very calm. I'm still very confident in Tesla and I still think they're going to beat. Now, for SPY, I want to note something very important. Like I was saying earlier, guys, I do believe the market is going to tank in the future. We just need more time for it to actually start. The reason why the market is still holding up so well, or at least one of the biggest reasons, is once again the options chain. So many people were shorting the market, betting the market's going to crash, it's going to crash, and the exact opposite tends to happen when this happens. If everyone is shorting the market, saying the market's going to crash, the market is more likely to cause pain and cause the opposite because the market tends to be painful you know there, there are even metrics called max pain and the market's goal in essence is just to it's it's dictated by the market makers and to cause as much pain for investors as possible technically now that does not mean that nobody could succeed on the market we could still succeed if we could see these things coming and we learn to invest accordingly but i just want to note that be prepared for manipulation now on spy i want to note something very good the good news is we gapped up yes but we failed to break above 404 however what is good is we're holding up very nicely. We closed around 403.7, very close to resistance. And in my opinion, whether we come down to fill this gap and then bounce, or we just keep going, the odds favor us most likely pushing up to this 406 level, maybe even a little higher to squeeze shorts. Now, once again, if you are bearish for the markets, make sure you watch this 402, 400, then 398 level. You have to watch all of those levels. If it breaks below 400, watch 398. If that fails, then there's 395 for the gap fill. Once again, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're more likely to push up. And I, I want to just note that we're still showing some very, very bullish signs right now. The MACD is still wide open. The PPO is still uh, in a very bullish direction as the histograms are continuing to increase in their value. And we're well above where the previous moving averages are as they're starting to spread, which means that the momentum is still in favor of the bulls and there's no sign of the market tanking from here on out. The market is still holding up. Will it tank later? Yes, in the future, it most likely will. But for now, we look bullish. SPY is probably going to see at least 406 to 408 tomorrow. The QQQ did something insane. It actually broke above this major resistance around 315. We saw 316 today. That is once again a bullish signal. Uh, we're actually seeing the MACD wide open. I don't know if it's going to come down a little bit before this thing wants to just keep going because right now the RSI is very close to being overbought. However, like I said before, short squeezes tend to happen and they tend to be painful for shorts this thing could still keep going if we if we manage to clear 316 this thing could go all the way up to about 318 to 320 and this is the highest level we've seen the qqq since september of 2022 that's insane and i believe the odds do favor upside if you're bearish all right make sure you watch 313 310 and levels around there there's also this gap down here to about 308 i don't think it's going to crash that much i i mean i personally think it's more likely to try to keep pushing especially because tesla's looking very good and that's just my opinion be prepared for anything but once again i do believe the odds favor upside amc wants to close above five it's gonna have to fight for five dollars it's just going back and forth and back and forth for now if it closes above $5 tomorrow, it has the potential to get back to 5.5. But for now, we want to see this thing at least try to close above 5. NEO is looking good. It's up over 6.41%. The MACD is wide open. 
If they give us a strong delivery, this thing is going to rocket, especially because this thing is starting to squeeze right now and lots of shorts will start covering and more buyers will start stepping in. It has lots of volume because of the fact that there are lots of buyers too. It's not just a short squeeze. And I believe that for tomorrow, uh, this will move depending on the data. We have to watch $10 of support just in case it comes down. And there's also a gap down to like 9.7. However, the more likely possibility is Neo is going to continue pushing, try to stay above 10 and retest 10.75 to 11. If it breaks, there's a gap all the way up to 11.2. It could keep going and the odds do favor Neo holding up. For the overall market, the VIX right now has a wide open MACD. It's continuing to actually look bearish, in my opinion, because look at the wicks on this thing. The wicks just look very, very strong in favor of the bears right now for the VIX, the people that are uh, betting on the VIX going down, for example. And this is most likely because the market is continuing to pump up. The market's actually dragging this thing down, the S&P 500. So I believe that because we broke below 19, that's not the best of signs. It did try to bounce off of that. So it's very flat right now, but the odds are starting to favor it continuing dropping because there's no sign of a true bounce technically. That tells me the VIX will likely re-enter around the 18s very soon. And that could actually help, or that could be because of the market pumping more. I also want to note that Eventually, the VIX will bounce somewhere, whether it's the 18s or 17.8 area. It will bounce eventually, but as of right now, there's no sign of it. That's the reason why I'm still a little bit more in favor of the bulls, unless we see something different, but I'm still aiming in that direction. Amazon closed at 102. That's a good close. It closed just at resistance. If it breaks 102, it has to test 103. Break that, then we have 105, which could come for Amazon. That's going to be bullish for the markets if we achieve it. But for the time being, we have to be ready. Now, I also want to note that it has a gap down to about 100 flats. If it fails right here and it comes all the way down to 100, once again, that won't, wouldn't be great for the overall market. But there's no clear sign of that happening just yet. If this thing can actually hold these levels and we still pump even after PCE comes out, because like I said before, CPI came out a few weeks ago. The market pumped off of it and CPI was for the month of February. This PCE coming out is for the month of February too. It might help the market pump. Who knows? But I believe it's most likely going to do that. I think we're most likely going to see a short squeeze. We might see Amazon try to get above 103. For Tesla, I'm thinking, like I said before, trying to get to about 200. If we get to 200, 202.5 becomes possible. The odds do favor this thing pumping, in my opinion. It's looking stronger by the days. For NVIDIA, uh, it's going to most likely try to retest 275. We might we may pull back to almost 270 in the beginning, depending on the data. There's also a gap down there, and then it might bounce and try to fight for this resistance around this 275. If it breaks it, we could go all the way up to 280. Overall, though, I'd be very careful on NVIDIA because it could still be in a topping process. It is very overbought. RSI is at about 71. So this tells me that, yes, it could keep going, but I'm going to be careful at the same time. It's not the best of stocks to just be going long on or like trying to buy at these high levels. It is overvalued. And in the future, it is going to see some major downside, but it's going to take a while before we actually see that, right? We're still waiting for it. Apple, and I'm going to make this one of my last ones. I want to keep this video not way too long. Apple's up about, uh, what's that, 0.99%. It closed at about 162 above the resistance at 162 flat. That's a good sign for Apple. Once again, in my opinion, I don't know if Apple's going to come down to 160 and then try to bounce. I don't really know that just yet. It could actually come down to 116 bounce, or it might just keep going. As long as it holds above 160, it has the potential to eventually try to get very close to 163.5 in the mid 160s. If that's the case, it's going to actually pump the QQQ and SPY. Make sure you watch that very carefully. And for the last two things, I'm going to talk about the 10-year treasury yield and also the dollar. The 10-year is down. I told you all that it's likely going to reject off uh, 35. I'm sorry, 36. Sorry about that, guys. 36. Uh, it rejected off 36. It's starting to actually downtrend a bit. If it continues to plummet and fill this gap down here around the 33.8 area, that's going to be bullish for the stock market. It's slowly starting to decline right now. Now, if it bounces, though, that would not be the best of signs, but there's no sign of a bounce. It looks more like it's starting to decline even more. On the dollar, the dollar is going to be retesting 102. We'll see if it tries to bounce or not. So far on the daily, it's looking more bearish for the time being. 
As financial conditions tighten, however, I do believe the dollar could try to bounce off. Maybe it's the 101s, maybe it goes all the way down to 100 and then it bounces. And that could be marking the top for the markets. But for the time being, there's no sign of the dollar just showing much strength. It's still continuing to downtrend. And that's actually bullish for the markets for now. So overall, guys, let me just make this as clear as possible. I am seeing downside in the future for the stock market. I am seeing the market eventually tanking over the next couple of months. I still believe that's most likely going to happen. But for now, the technicals, the charts are looking more bullish. They're still looking bullish. It looks like the market has more room. So I don't see us tanking yet. I think the market's going to hold up and we're going to likely continue to see uh, the market makers try to squeeze shorts. And I do believe they have the edge right now. We also have a possible head and shoulders developing on SPY. Obviously, if we want to get closer to the previous resistance, we have to get, you know, we have to go higher and higher and higher, well above like 407, 408. And that can mark the top, maybe somewhere around there, 408 to 410, somewhere there. And it's, it's a possibility. We'll see how tomorrow goes, but once again, the odds favor upside. So finally, to conclude this video, Tesla is at 195 right now. Uh, this thing is respecting an uptrend. This is what the candles are just looking like. Once again, making higher lows over and over again. We're most likely going to see 200 plus tomorrow during a move. If anything, guys, I'm not going to be holding like calls over the week. And I just want to note that because it's very important to manage risks. And I'm not too confident or sure about how it's going to go exactly when it comes to their deliveries. So I'm just not going to gamble. If anything, I'm just going to, you know, secure profits on the calls and uh, just be very patient on a market like this. So with that said, thank you all for listening. Tesla is still looking good. Uh, remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.